Today I'm gonna try making a funky looking dish from Tears of the Kingdom. No, not the dubious food or monster stew, that stuff was in Breath of the Wild which is so 2017. Instead I'm gonna try to make some dark curry and I'm gonna eat it with you. So we're halfway through 2023 and so far my favorite game this year is Tears of the Kingdom so I have to do a video on it. Of course I love the cooking mechanics in these new Zelda games, there are so many different recipes and I just love how Link cooks chucking everything in the pot, bottles and all. If only cooking was like that in real life. One of the new recipes added to this game is the dark curry, which not only provides you with health, but also protects you from a dangerous substance called gloom. According to the game, this is a hard-hitting curry with a dark clump base whose flavor is hard to hide. Now I know blue curry sounds strange, but it's not unheard of. At one point you would be able to buy these box blue curries like this Krishna Oshtok curry or this Mount Fuji curry. They even had these weird game tie-ins like this Dragon Quest slime curry and this Sonic curry. But in the spirit of Tears of the Kingdom's DIY nature, we're gonna make it from scratch. To make the dark curry, we need three ingredients. Hylian rice, Goron spice, and a dark clump. So I got my rice from a Hyrule vendor, I think it's a little overpriced. Goron spice is supposed to be made from several types of spices and I definitely have a lot of spices. Now I don't have dark clump, but I do have an unusual substance that's cold to the touch and is filled with pitch black darkness. The squid ink straight from my freezer. Let's do this. I'm gonna go with my go-to ratio of one to one jasmine rice with water, rinse it a few times until the water is less cloudy, then I'm gonna add about a three quarter tablespoon of squid ink. I've never used squid ink before, so I hope this turns out okay. I'm gonna mix it until the squid ink is well incorporated with the rice and water and pop that in my rice cooker. We'll check on that later. So I tried to find out what goes into the Goron spice, but nobody wants to help me. Everybody's just glazed out for some reason. So I'm just gonna take my best guess since Goron's like hot and earthy flavors and the fact that we're using it for a curry, I'm gonna guess that it has one tablespoon of coriander powder, four teaspoons of cumin powder, half a teaspoon of turmeric powder, one and a half teaspoons of garam masala powder, and half a tablespoon of chili powder. Might not be the real deal, but it's my best guess. Now we're ready to make the curry. In a Dutch oven, I'm gonna heat up a tablespoon of olive oil and a teaspoon of butter. You can also use ghee, but mine was all the way at the back of my pantry and the butter was right in front of the fridge, so my laziness won out. And according to the in-game description, this curry's flavor is hard to hide, so I think the gaminess of lamb is a perfect match for that. I used a pound and a half of lamb shoulder and cut it into tiny cubes. I usually like my lamb pieces bigger, but for this recipe I didn't want it to stand out too much since the in-game photo looks pretty saucy. Once the lamb cubes are brown all sides, transfer to a plate and set aside for later. Now we're gonna season that same pan with some lovely aromatics. Add another tablespoon of oil and another teaspoon of butter, then add in a cinnamon stick, two black cardamoms, and two bay leaves. Fry that for a couple of minutes to release the flavors, then scatter on that goron spice and cook that for a couple minutes. Uh oh, I think I'm starting to burn this, so to add some moisture back in there, I'm gonna toss in one finely chopped onion, four cloves of minced garlic, and two tablespoons of minced ginger. And to kick it up a notch to the level of heat that Gorons will love, I'm gonna add in two bird's eye chilies and a scotch bonnet pepper. I'm gonna toss these in whole because I wanna be able to easily take them out after cooking because I don't want flecks of red and orange in my curry. It won't be as hot, but I'm going for looks here, folks. Fry these up for a bit to soften the onions, then add in two chopped up tomatoes. After a few minutes of frying, let's bring back in the lamb and combine everything well. Then we're gonna cover everything up with three cups of chicken stock. Let this all cook on low heat for two hours until the meat is nice and soft. While we wait on that, let's make the raita. Whenever I get super spicy lamb biryani, I love to douse it with raita, and I like to eat it with spicy curry as well. Raita is a yogurt-like condiment that provides the perfect cooling contrast. Raita is like the bonfire in Dark Souls or the typewriter room in Resident Evil, a calming relief that's sprinkled throughout a wild, wild ride. 
Our raita is gonna be a super simple version. We're gonna take one cup of whole yogurt, half a cup of finely diced cucumbers, and a tablespoon of cilantro. You can also add salt, pepper, and cumin, but I'm just gonna keep it simple and use these three things. Now, because our dark curry has a stunning bluish hue, we're gonna make our raita kind of look like that, split the raita into two bowls, add a bit of blue food coloring to one, and more on the other. Now we have two different shades of blue that I hope will get us that cool blue gradient. Now, let's go check back on our curry. Two hours later and our curry is looking mighty nice and smelling fragrant. A bit runny and soupy though, so I'm gonna thicken it up a bit by adding flour one tablespoon at a time. I ended up needing three tablespoons of flour to get this nice, silky, smooth richness. All that's left is to turn this blue. I'm really hoping that this is gonna turn bluish and not brown or gray. Let's mix in the first set of drops and yeah, this is looking like doo-doo, literally. The brown curry mixed with the blue food coloring ended up being greenish gray, which is no good. I was using liquid food coloring, but now I'm gonna add some blue food gel in hopes that it's gonna turn blue. Okay, this is working pretty well. It's not greenish gray anymore, so that's a plus. Kind of like a dark blue now, which is fine because there's a lot of dark parts of the sauce. I think this and the raita are going to give us the right shades of blue that we need. Okay, how's our rice doing? Ooh, nice and deeply dark. But when I opened the rice cooker, I immediately got a waft of fishy aroma, which did catch me off guard. I don't know how this is going to pair with the curry, but let's find out. Spread some of that dark rice on one half of the plate then the dark curry on the other side. Right now, it's looking disgustingly dark, but the raita is gonna give us that pop of color with those beautiful blue highlights. Add some more of that dark curry on top to complete the look. Lastly, sprinkle on some white sesame seeds on the rice. We did it! Dark curry from The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Looks pretty good, right? The main thing I wanted to do was to see if I can make curry that looks like the one in the game, and I'd say, mission accomplished. I am pretty concerned about the taste though. Trying the rice first, hey, not as bad as I thought. I was expecting it to have a stronger taste since the fishy smell is so strong, but no, it's pretty light tasting. Although at this point, I think my nose got used to the smell and it's pretty much like eating regular rice now. Let's try it with a curry. Not bad. Nice blend of spices with a creamy texture. The lamb is super soft and on point. Spicy but not too spicy with a refreshing raita to cool it down. Not gonna lie, the blue color is throwing me off a bit, so I'm trying not to think about it. Reminds me of the time I got purple ketchup as a kid. Still tasted like ketchup, but for some reason the color messed with my head and I didn't find it that appetizing when I drizzled it over my fries. I feel like this is that same mental block. Listen, if you want a solid spicy lamb curry recipe, just take out the squid ink and the food coloring and I think you'll like this. But of course, if you want to have the real deal Tears of the Kingdom experience and you're trying to find out what it's like to eat curry in the depths, then give this a try. Hope you like it.